Wiltshire Live with Sue Kinnear, BBC Radio Wiltshire. So we have had some spectacular starry skies in Wiltshire during the recent cold snap, but perhaps the best starry skies can be enjoyed in the Cranbourne Chase area of outstanding natural beauty in the county, uh, which recently won dark sky reserve status, one of very few in the world. The night skies, when clear, are a passion for many, and one of uh, those who shares that passion is our Happiness Project guest this evening. Josh Dury describes himself as a night sky conservationist, and he is our guest this evening for... The Happiness Project. So, Josh, it seems logical to start by asking you, what exactly is a night sky conservationist? Well, just to say good evening to yourself, Sue, and also to your listeners on BBC Radio Wiltshire. So, a night sky conservationist is an individual like myself who campaigns the protection, really, of light pollution and mega satellite constellations, which are having an impact on the night sky. So, I'm sure many of your listeners will be aware about the impacts of light at night. And this is really when lights shining above the horizontal creates a sky glow which affects astronomers like ourselves and reduces the contrast of the night sky in its most basic form. And it's where I come in um, as a delegate of the International Dark Sky Association to raise public awareness and make change to current climate issues. Obviously, light pollution means that, you know, you can't enjoy, as an astronomer, you can't enjoy the night sky, but it's also very bad for wildlife, isn't it? And the natural world. It is, because not only does it have an impact to astronomers, but also the natural environment, the natural world. And in particular, it has a great impact to nocturnal wildlife species, including Britain's bat and barn owl populations, as a couple of examples, but also to human health implications, thinking about its impact to nocturnal sleep patterns when exposed to artificial light at night and affecting our bodily hormones, which can only be produced at night. Mm. So when you're campaigning to, to stop light pollution, I mean, do you have any real hope that you can? Because towns and cities will always be lit up at night, won't they? I do. Um, in particular, I find with the current climate crisis where issues such as plastic are being addressed, light pollution is a very simple solution, which is just a flick of the switch. You turn off a light and that is our situation solved. But the one problem being that I'm not here to necessarily say we must turn all of our lights off because for obvious reasons, we need lighting for our public highways and for health and safety reasons. But it's all a matter of where light is used and where it's needed so that light isn't shining above the horizontal and we're using the correct fo uh, form of lighting. So, Josh, you're an astronomer. You're passionate about dark skies, starry skies. If the lights are off, what should we be enjoying in those night skies at the moment? If there's no clouds, of course. What... Oh, over the skies of Wiltshire, you'll see so many exciting celestial objects. First of all, thinking about the constellations themselves and two of my favourites being the constellation of Orion and Gemini. They're stunning to look up to on a clear night sky and thinking more about the planets, what we're seeing in the night sky at the moment, and being able to observe some of the larger objects in the solar system, but also thinking more about the deep sky objects of the night skies from uh, galaxies to nebulas and look absolutely stunning through a telescope. I can hear the passion in your voice and you mentioned the telescope there but we don't have to have expensive bits of kit to enjoy the night sky do we? No all you need is your unaided eyes so when you're looking up on a cold clear night over the frosty landscape of Wiltshire you'll be able to see so much with the unaided eye alone and some of those objects being so far away from earth that we can see objects which are millions of light years away and that's the thing which is so compelling about astronomy 
especially during the recent lockdowns, is that we can all be connected together by looking up to the stars. That's a lovely, lovely thought. Uh, Josh Jury, stay right there. We're going to have much more chat from you uh, about the night sky and your campaign to uh, reduce, if not end, light pollution. So don't go anywhere. More from our Happiness Project guest, Josh Drury, on the night skies in about 10 minutes' time. New music on BBC Radio Watcher. That's Griff with Black Hole, which is in space, which is kind of what we're talking about this evening's Happiness Project. It's, well, we're considering the night sky and with a dark sky conservationist who's passionate about starry nights and who wants to cut light pollution across Wiltshire and the country. His name is Josh Drury and he is our guest in this evening's... The Happiness Project. So, Josh, I haven't yet asked you why the stars at night make you happy, but this is the Happiness Project. So why do they make you happy? Oh, the stars on so many levels, Sue, make me so happy because really astronomy is a place of awe and wonder where astronomers like myself can use telescopes to look at the amazing objects of the night sky but they also allow us to connect with communities from around the world, with different astronomers in different countries. And it's so important to be looking up at the heavens because not only is it a part of our natural environment, but is also a part of our human existence where we looked up to the stars to find our place in the universe. And from there, it's so many important aspects to consider, especially with the recent lockdowns as well. And you take photographs uh, of the night sky as well, which is clever work, isn't it? It's one of my favourite passions of mine, Sue. And astrophotography is a way which I can really connect with not only land and sky, but the heavens themselves. And only fairly recently, I've been taking photographs at the iconic landmark, which is Stonehenge. Ooh, and did you get recently, permission? <laughs> I did, with thanks to English Heritage. And being able to capture images of the recent comet, Comets Neowise from above Stonehenge. And for me, thinking about happiness in relation to astronomy, it was just such an amazing thought to think that this comet, when it last passed our solar system, that Stonehenge hadn't been built. So it's ironic to think that when this comet come round once again, it would see the prehistoric monument standing as a ruin on Salisbury Plain. And it makes me wonder in thousands of years when it returns to our solar system, what will it see then? Wow, it is extraordinary what you're talking about. Massive expanses of time uh, and, and the fact that it's constant as well. Uh, it, it is astonishing. Are you pleased with the photographs you've been able to take at, at Stonehenge? Oh, absolutely fabulous. It was being able to capture so many perspectives of the monument and in particular being able to capture some of the astronomical alignments at the monument and really connecting with our place in the universe and how Stonehenge was once believed to be used as an observatory to calculate the positions of the sun and the moon along the horizon. And I should say that nobody's allowed to go along and take pictures willy-nilly, are they? You got you got special permission and were invited to do so uh, by English Heritage. Um, the Cranbourne Chase area of outstanding natural beauty, they fought long and hard to win Dark Sky Reserve uh, status, Josh, uh, one of very few in the world. Are you encouraged by other signs that people are now anxious to cut light pollution at night and enjoy uh, the starry skies. Very much so. In light of the current climate and also thanks to the likes of the plastic crisis, light pollution is very much a new area of climate conservation and it's where people like myself as a night sky conservationist do our best to raise public awareness of the dark sky movement and we're making gradual progress to realise the importance of artificial light at night and why we should be minimising these implications in order to protect not only professional astronomical observations but also as I mentioned earlier in your programme Sue 
the impacts of nocturnal wildlife, British wildlife, and also the implications of human health, because ultimately there are so many ways in which the natural world is being affected at this moment in time, which we can make such gradual change in protecting the dark skies we have left and to be making change within our urban settings as well. Josh, it's been a revelation talking to you this evening. If people want to find out more about your campaigning work, where should they look? So one place to look is my website, which is www.joshjuryphotomedia.com. Otherwise, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and YouTube at Josh Jury Photomedia. And Jury is spelt with a D, of course. Josh, thank you so much uh, for coming on and sharing all your enthusiasm and wisdom about the stars and the night sky. You take care. And thank you for having me, Sue. Josh Jury there, a night sky conservationist working hard uh, to preserve our dark skies uh, in his campaign. And as he said, you can find him at joshjuryphotomedia.com. Mm-hmm.